and welcome to Electric Goddess's YouTube channel. My name is Jill Pastana and I'm technical director here at Electric Goddess and today I'm going to be discussing the differences between two EIS or electrochemical impedance spectroscopy techniques, GEIS and PEIS. I'm excited not only to share the differences between these techniques and when it's best to use each one, but also to give a demonstration using Electric Goddess's electrochemical workstation, this Admiral Instruments Squidstat Plus that we've named Squidward. And I'll be gathering data on an 18650 lithium ion battery. Before we discuss the differences between GEIS and PEIS, I first wanna share the differences between galvanostat and a potentiostat. Both are electrochemical control and measuring devices, but there's a significant difference between the two. A potentiostat is a control and measuring device capable of keeping the voltage constant in an electrolytic cell. It sets the potential or voltage against a reference electrode. A galvanostat is a control and measuring device capable of keeping the current constant. It can apply a wide range of currents of both polarities, both positive and negative. You could think of these, a potentiostat and a galvanostat, like a thermostat, which may be a word more familiar to you. You use those to set the temperature in your home or your workplace to a certain set temperature level. And if you break down the word, the word thermostat, thermo means temperature, stat means set or stand. So you're literally setting the temperature. So a potentiostat sets the potential or voltage and a galvanostat sets the current. An instrument like this Squidstat Plus can be both a potentiostat or a galvanostat. It's simply called an electrochemical workstation. For short, a lot of people just call these types of instruments potentiostats, even though they can do both. So it's important to get clarification on what the capabilities of a specific instrument can do for you. A potentiostat is only part of its capabilities, which is so cool. All right, I think it's time to dive into some PEIS and GEIS now that you understand the differences between a potentiostat and a galvanostat. Now here we are, time for the tongue twister. So GEIS stands for Galvanostatic Electrochemical Impedance Spectroscopy, and PEIS stands for Potentiostatic Electrochemical Impedance Spectroscopy. I got that on the first take. Now, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna be explaining what EIS is and how it works in this video, but you can check out my videos on Across the Nanoverse, which I'll link in the description below for more information on that. What I will say here though, is that in EIS, you're applying a small perturbation to your sample, device, whatever you're electrochemically characterizing. And in our case, we're characterizing a lithium ion battery. And so I'm going to stick with those kinds of examples today. This small perturbation can either be in the form of a small alternating current or a small alternating voltage. This is one way we can probe the inside of a battery to see what are its impedances and what are its materials performances over time. For GEIS, we are indicating that it's the current for the small perturbation, while for PEIS, we are indicating that it's the voltage that is used as the small perturbation. EIS is fantastic for systems with a linear, causal, and stable response for voltage and current interchangeably. What I mean by this is that if you have a system and you increase the voltage, if it responds linearly, then the current will increase proportionally. Similarly, as you increase the current of a system, the voltage will respond to that causally and increase proportionally or linearly. So as you change the voltage, it immediately affects the current, and when you change the current, it immediately affects the voltage. And so you're able to apply current, see a voltage depending on the impedances, or apply a voltage and see a current depending on the impedances. However, unfortunately, systems like batteries are not very ideal for this. If you really know batteries, you know that with different cell chemistries, as you increase the current or the charge rate of the battery, say, the voltage doesn't necessarily increase. A great example of that is for lithium iron phosphate or LFP cells in which the voltage curve is relatively flat. As you charge the battery, no matter how much current you put into it, for a period of time on that voltage curve, your voltage is gonna remain about the same value. You won't have any kind of voltage indication that you are applying current to your battery. If you're a battery engineer setting up a battery management system or BMS and you're trying to do state of charge estimation, you know how this can be quite a headache. 
That's a topic for a different day though. For now, we're just focusing on GEIS and PEIS. Batteries and basically every real life electrochemical system you'll study is not going to follow exactly what the textbook says, right? It's not an ideal system. This means it's so important to really understand the system that you're working with so that you can properly pick whether you're using GEIS or PEIS to study it. Ideally, you could use either one on a system. But, however, in the real world, you have to probably pick one of them to use because one will be most appropriate for your system. To select which one is appropriate, a great way to do this is to understand how your instrumentation works and what's the limitation of that. It's also important to recognize what is the current response to voltage and the voltage response to current in your system. PEIS, in which you control the voltage, is the tool of choice. But if you apply voltage to a system like a battery in which you get a current response, batteries are a low impedance system and so this current could exceed the current limit of your potentiostat. In systems that have a low impedance, it's preferable to use GEIS. This SquidStat Plus has a current limit of one amp and so if you do want to perform PEIS on a battery, it's important to make sure that you're choosing a potentiostat that can reach that goal, that has a higher current limit. Otherwise, using GEIS and applying a sinusoidal alternating current is just great. For this demo, I have a lithium ion battery 18650 cylindrical cell in our battery holder wired up with a four point measurement to the SquidStat Plus. And now I'm going to run GEIS and then PEIS to demonstrate how PEIS, you can't really even complete the experiment for this cell because it reaches that current limit. So let's start this experiment. And here it started collecting the data. There we can see the Nyquist plot forming in that GEIS experiment. Works great. Now this experiment can take a little bit of time, so I'm going to stop it a little early. Now that we've seen that the GEIS experiment works, let's see what happens when we select for a PEIS experiment. So once I hit save, it'll start. And it stopped just as quickly as it started. That's because it's reaching that one amp current limit. To sum this all up, PEIS sets a potential or voltage and GEIS sets a current. For batteries, GEIS is more preferable to use over PEIS because batteries are a low impedance system and you don't want to exceed the current limit and not get your data. I encourage you, if you're interested in learning more about the SquidStat Plus, to check in the description below for more information and links. If you're interested in learning more about how you can use these techniques to help with your batteries, I encourage you to contact Electric Goddess by following the link in the description as well. If you enjoyed learning with us here at Electric Goddess, I encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. That way you can be notified of future videos that we post. Thanks for watching. See you next time.